Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I'm going to talk to you about the role of AMH in a modified natural IVF cycle. And does AMH really predict the chances of pregnancy in these cycles? So what is a modified natural cycle? And it's been used in poor responders. So you work along with nature to try and get an oocyte. Modified natural adapts the natural cycle. And in these cases, we decide to either generate one or two follicles. So now what is AMH? And AMH is produced by the cumulus cells of small growing follicles, which are less than seven millimeter. Now some studies link it to menopause. And also we know that it, it contributes to the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So again, when you look at AMH and you say, well, what is AMH good at? And AMH is good at predicting response to ovarian stimulation. And that's what it is good at. How good is it at predicting clinical outcomes? Not very good. And, and as soon as somebody tells me that I, I, there's a low AMH and egg donation is the only option, I think they're not telling you the truth. They either have just not understood what AMH is and are contradicting whatever knowledge that I based on AMH. So I think that AMH's role in predicting clinical outcomes is not really at a very high level. It's there, but not as good as we think it is. Now, there is a, a weak correlation between AMH and clinical pregnancy rates. And the, the objective of this study is to examine impact of serum AMH on modified IVF live birth rates. So this is a single center study, a retrospective cohort of less than 39 years of age, 2010 to 2013. Modified natural protocol, you scan on day nine, there's a dominant follicle of 15 millimeter, you the endometrium of at least six millimeter, and you start the GNRH antagonist, and, and to prevent an estrogen drop and prevent atresia, you add 150 of gonadotrophins. You give endometacin, and I'll do another talk on endometacin, and it's, it's probable role in preventing uh, early oocyte release, 50 milligram PR three times a day, and HCG is given as a trigger, an ovum pickup 34 hours later, and cleavage uh, state embryos were replaced on day three, and IVF for ICSI was done. So let's have a look at the results. And when you look at the results, the cancellation rates are very much the same. So what they looked at, they looked at under the 25th centile, which means AMH very low, 0.01 nanogram per ml to 0.5 nanogram, and the 25th to 75th centile was 0.51 nanogram per ml to, to 2.03 nanogram per ml. And AMH more than 75 was 2.04 nanogram to 6.56, so very much in the PCOS range. And we look at cancellations on the, under the 25th centile. Across the board was fine. Miscarriage rates were similar. Live birth rates were very much similar, though probably slightly higher on the PCOS side. Then when you look at women under 35, and then you see the live birth rates were generally on the higher side. So have a look at what happens to live birth rates. And I, I think, I personally think that age is the better predictor of success rather than AMH. And age tends to give you a far better idea of, of euploidy rather than AMH. So in this study, AMH was not found to be a reliable marker of live birth rates in I am a mild IVF cycle. We know that it is a very good predictor of a variant response, but its chances to achieve pregnancy and live birth rates have limitations. And some studies, in fact, have shown lower implantation rates when AMH levels were very low. And when you compare that with high AMH levels, but at the available evidence about AMH, it's conflicting and it's not very clear. There's some evidence that also suggests that AMH concentrations have an inverse relationship to miscarriages. 
And we also know that AMH is not linked to time for pregnancy. And this was a very good study done in the United States, which gave us that uh, good confirmation. And thus in this study, I, they say that you should, be, should offer modified natural IVF to women who have a very low AMH. And in fact, what I will go a step further, I'll say, well, if somebody is young and has a good antral follicle count and has a wearable antral follicle count, then you should try and stimulate his ovaries. And that is something which I teach in a lecture called Chasing the Antral Follicle. And, and I have done that in my private practice and as well as in the NHS, and I've seen quite surprising results. And, and you know what I would suggest is, I would suggest that you sh we should try and give these women a chance. Now, if you have liked this talk and please share it and uh, do like the page and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to join us in any of our teaching sessions, then uh, drop us a line and you can join us in our teaching sessions either in Dubai or at the NHS Day Homerton or at any conference that we do. And I will love to see you and discuss these points with you. Thank you very much.